of marketing, finance, uh, accounting, and business planning. So if you are a startup entrepreneur or you have an existing business and you need that additional support, we are here to help you, rockfordsbdc.org. And also I want to remind everybody real quick that uh, we have 3D printing in-person classes coming up. Um, we've already had two sessions, uh, basic and intermediate, where we uh, have given 15 people certifications for those classes, which is awesome. And our next session is coming up March 9th and 11th at uh, the Rockford Regional Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And then after that is March 23rd and 25th at NIU Rockford. Again, go to rockfordsbdc.org to sign up for those classes and they are free. With that, I would like to introduce our speaker today to talk about marketing channels for 2022. And I will unmute Teresa. <laughs> Welcome to Teresa Knopf. She is with Local IQ and I will let her get started. Thank you so much, Heather, I appreciate that. And hello everyone, and thank you so much for joining today's webinar. I am Teresa Knopf and I'm a multimedia sales executive for Local IQ, as you can see on the screen there. I'm excited to be here today at the start of the new year to talk about the best marketing channels for 2022. Hopefully that's why you're all here and you're not in the wrong webinar. Um, please note this webinar is being recorded, so don't worry about taking notes. Um, you can access it later. Be sure to find the chat box also for any questions you'd like to ask during the webinar, and we will try to cover them at the end if we have time for the Q&A. Um, so let's get started. There we go. Okay. Um, and Heather, uh, if there are any issues with uh, sound or anything, please let me know. Local IQ is part of the USA Today network, just so everyone knows who I'm with and, and where I'm from. I am located here in Rockford. Um, I also represent the Rockford Register Star from the print side of things, but digitally I'm with Local IQ owned by uh, the USA Today network. Um, some of you might be familiar with Local IQ, others might be new to this. But Local IQ is an all-in-one marketing platform that optimizes any marketing budget for small businesses to help them find, convert, and keep customers. I love my job because I help businesses grow every single day. Be sure to find us on the web. Definitely follow us on social media. Um, we post a lot of great content there. Here is my contact information. Um, I've been in marketing and advertising on both sides of the table for many years. Um, as I said earlier, I love working with businesses, guiding them in their marketing and helping them grow and succeed. Um, a fun fact about me is that I love to play the piano and um, that's what I do to relax or when I'm feeling stressed out about something or just need to work through some thoughts, I play the piano. So take down my contact information, take a screenshot, whatever you wanna do and feel free to reach out to me at any time. Happy to help. So let's get started. Um, the agenda for today, we're going to walk through understanding marketing channels, uh, defining cross-channel marketing, picking the right channels for your business, and running through 14 key marketing channels for this year. Um, I'm going to be covering a lot, so I'm going to move fairly quickly. Um, today's meant to be an overview, and with limited time, um, I'm not going to get too granular, um, but happy to help at any time after, after today. So let's start with marketing channels. In very simple terms, um, these are uh, places you would promote your business, social media, email blasts, print, direct mail, any place you'd go to get your business name out there and wherever it can be found, that's a marketing channel. Cross-channel marketing. To understand this, we have to first take a step back and look at multi-channel marketing. Um, I'm not going to stress the difference between multi-channel and cross-channel marketing too much. Um, they're sometimes used synonymously. Uh, so there are different ways to reference these types of marketing, but it's good to talk about each of them um, individually. Multi-channel marketing is using more than one channel, which is ideal. You want to be getting your business out there in different places, online, offline, 
Um, it means you're promoting your business in different ways across different places. However, with multi-channel marketing, um, your message may not be consistent across all of those channels. Unlike cross-channel marketing, um, this takes it a step further. This is still a mix of channels, but it's a little bit different because it's more cohesive. Um, you're unifying the strategy across the various channels and providing more of a consistent brand experience. So more ideal. Um, the two different tones tend to confuse customers. So the more you can keep your brand on message across all of your channels, the better. That's why we recommend a cross-channel approach to provide that, provide that brand consistency. Um, again, not a huge difference between the two, but you'll hear both terms out there. So um, that's the main difference between cross-channel marketing and multi-channel marketing. Um, again, consumer marketing is seamless uh, across all channels. Multi-channel is different. For example, um, the look and feel of your Facebook page may not be the same look and feel as your website. Um, if you've hired somebody to do a nice slick uh, website for you, but then you're not following through with that same message in your Facebook, um, that can tend to confuse the consumer. Um, so make sure that you keep those things consistent across. So how many channels should you use? <clears throat> Excuse me, a lot of people ask this question, <clears throat> no matter the size of their business. <clears throat> if you consider the buyer's journey, the goal is to reach your target audience at any stage in the funnel. But there is really no one size fits all approach. It's unique to your business. Um, I'm gonna help you today to try to walk through how to pick the right amount for your business. With a cross-channel approach, you're reaching all the different customers across the funnel. Uh, hopefully all this is familiar to you. Uh, throughout the buying journey, you wanna catch them at every step of the way and maintain that seamless experience with the brand consistency. So why cross-channel marketing works? It helps you hit that rule of seven. Hopefully you, you're familiar with the rule of seven. It's pretty common out there today. Um, the rule of seven says that people need to see something at least seven times before they will either retain it, act on it, or, or buy from someone. Um, so the more channels you have, the faster you re reach that seven times. Um, even today, I've heard it talked about 10 times because there are so many different channels now um, to reach the consumer. So here are some stats for you, um, basically stating uh, and pointing out that customers want a seamless cohesive experience. Um, implementing across the channels will help you out with that. 97% believe delivering great customer experience is crucial for success and 87% of customers say brands could deliver more consistent experiences. Okay, another stat here, 71% of consumers say they're more likely to buy a product or service from a brand they recognize. I think that we can all, as consumers, um, attest to that. Um, with the brand recognition that you grow through cross-channel marketing, it's gonna help boost your sales. It's gonna take a lot longer for them to recognize your business if you're only on one channel. So that's another reason that cross-channel marketing is a good fit. Brand consistency boosts average revenue by 23%. So a huge growth in revenue when you have brand consistency, the same font, same colors, same logos across the board. Um, they drive the recognition and then you're really going to see that growth. <clears throat> Excuse me. So picking your channels in five easy steps. We've broken it down into five steps um, and we're gonna start with uh, the SWOT analysis. Hopefully, um, some, most of you are familiar with the SWOT analysis. It's again, something that's been out there for quite some time. This is the first thing you're gonna wanna do to look at your current marketing, what's working and what's not. So we recommend the SWOT analysis. Um, with regard to strengths, what am I running on that's currently converting well? What have I done in the past that has brought me success? Shifting gears to weaknesses. What channels have I tried that haven't done well? Why not? What are my competitors doing that I'm not doing? Um, where are my resource limitations, such as time, budget, things like that? Regarding opportunities, what are some unique value propositions that I can propose to potential customers across the channels? Positive media coverage of your company, emerging products, 
or services to promote, um, even doing events. These are great opportunities. Um, and then lastly, threats. What are my competitors doing that I'm not? What are my customers' attitudes toward my current channels? For example, if I'm running all print and my customers are switching gears to mobile ads, which is happening so much today, um, then they probably aren't favoring my print ads anymore. Uh, so there's a chance that they may not be as effective as if um, they would be if I were to switch to another strategy. So that's the SWOT analysis. On to goals, knowing your goals. Now you can start setting your goals and this will help you narrow down which marketing channels will be best. So smart, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. Again, this may be something that is familiar to you. Um, it's very popular. So with regard to specific, for example, if you say, I want to grow Instagram followers, that's not very specific. But if you were to say, I want to grow by X amount, doing these three tactics, and I'll check on it every week for the next six weeks. This is a lot more specific um, and a lot more achievable and a better way to hold yourself accountable. What's measurable? What does success look like for you and how are you going to track that? Is it leads? Is it site visits? Is it conversions? Or is it a combination of those things? Achievable. For example, uh, if you're running search ads and you want to get at least one customer a day from your search ads, um, if the cost per click is $10, for example, and you only have a $10 daily budget, well then that one lead that you pull in that day better convert. Um, it's a pretty basic example, but if you have a smaller budget, that's fine. We can adjust to that and find the right marketing tactics for you. However, you're gonna to have to adjust your goals and perhaps you're gonna set them smaller, maybe only one customer a week or one customer a month, for example. And then as you grow, you can again adjust your goals. Uh, relevancy, think about what you're currently promoting and what you have in the year ahead. If you switch gears, make sure that your tactics are relevant to what's currently going on in your business. And then time bound, simply making sure you're holding yourself accountable to a realistic time frame for achieving these goals. So that's SMART. Once you have an idea of your big picture, it's time to zero in on your target audience. And this can be really fun. Think of that ideal person in your head. Who, the, who are they? Where do they live? What do they do for work? How much money do they have? Do they have kids? Are they older? Are they younger? This helps identify new opportunities. For example, um, if you're targeting engineers, um, that ideal person works nine to five, they work in an office, they're busy, they're affluent. Um, I wanna show my display ads on pages related to engineering. However, if you think about it, that's not probably the best place to reach them all the time. They're real people. Um, they might not be looking at articles about engineering all day. They're thinking about what they want for dinner, what the weather is like, what they're gonna be doing on the weekend. Those are um, places that you wanna seek out then for effective placement. Uh, that you may not think of if you haven't gotten into the mind of your target audience. Self-evaluation and selection is step four. This is where you get to look at your channels, um, list them, don't rule anything out, split them into two buckets. Um, in the need to have and nice to have. In the need to have is definitely need to have these uh, to be promoting your business. Nice to have are after your resources are allocated, then you choose these. Uh, for each channel, think out of the box. How can this channel work within my budget? What are the paid and non-paid options within this uh, bucket? Regardless of a small or a monster budget, if it's a big budget, maybe the paid options are the best for you. Um, know your budget, but don't let your budget limit you because there are workarounds. Um, think about how you're gonna execute on each channel. Um, it's gonna add some additional costs no matter which way you go. So if you plan to execute and manage all yourself on top of running your business, that's gonna take valuable time away from running your business. If you wanna hire someone in-house, that can cost just as much or outsource to an agency also costs. Um, lastly, what is my target audience already engaging with? What are my competitors doing? Who follows your competitors? What are, what are your um, competitors doing on social media? All things to consider. And step five, keep in mind the 2022 trends. Um, this is the last thing that you wanna do. So now that you have your list, have your buckets, before a final rule out of any of the channels, think about the trends. Um, the marketing landscape is constantly changing and so should your strategy. 
For example, 93% of online experiences begin on a search engine, as it says here. 72% of customers would rather learn about a product or service through a video than text. Video is really hot right now. It didn't used to be. So um, keeping these things in mind and making adjustments as needed. Okay, so let's jump into it. The 14 marketing channels, I've been mentioning channels all along the way uh, that we recommend. Uh, 14 is a lot, so I broke them up into different categories. We're gonna go through them in sections. It's a lot of information, so stay with me. Um, and we're breaking them down into free, paid, both free and paid options and trending. Everybody's interested in free, so let's start there. So local SEO, search engine optimization. Hopefully that term is familiar to you. Hopefully you're already practicing this, but as a refresher, um, this is optimizing your on-site content for local searches, okay? It's providing a quality website and user experience. 55% of people use a mobile device for local searches, by the way. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit later too, that you wanna make sure that you have um, a mobile friendly site. Um, basically, this means that you're altering your text on your website and optimizing your website so that you show up on searches like on Google. For SMBs, it's important to note the stat of 46% of Google searches have local intent. So. Um, if you're a small local business, which hope, hopefully everybody on this call is, uh, it's appropriate. Uh, not everybody's searching the big national searches out there. Um, so use your SEO. It's a free way to get on Google. Also having the quality website experience for mobile devices, as I mentioned earlier, and scattering certain keywords that are relevant to your business throughout your website help your SEO. Okay. Next is organic social media marketing. This is where you promote your brand across platforms like Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. There are so many options to fit your business goals. Use engaging media, photos, hashtags. It's a great way to find followers outside of the search uh, population and new audiences. As it says here, 3.7 billion social media users worldwide. That's a lot of people. So you're bound to find your target audience here. Okay, so um, I should mention too, SEO that I mentioned in number one, there are options to pay for that service. Uh, Local IQ does provide that too, but in general, that's something that you can easily do for free. On to paid marketing channels, paid social ads. This is where you're putting your budget behind an organic post or a social campaign. Um, this is to reach beyond your current followers. These are not the people that are just uh, liking your page. This is reaching anybody who is uh, on social media with your ads, with your paid ads. Um, and it is a great way to reach a whole new audience and you can target your audience. Um, this also helps with your feed ranking. One important thing to keep in mind is that you wanna have a clear call to action uh, to entice someone to take action, which will hopefully drive them to then your website or a landing page. Um, and as it says here, this is the leading paid content distribution method in North America. 80% of businesses are already using paid social. I know in my work that it's very, very popular, very common. And by common, I mean effective. <laughs> um, number four, search ads, also known as SEM or search engine marketing. PPC or pay-per-click, Google ads, and Microsoft ads. Um, this is where you're tossing money to the search engines to have your listing show as an ad at the top of the search engine results page. So for example, if I'm a roofer and I bid on the search term roofers near me, I say I pay, for example, $5 for my ad to show. If your bid is high enough and you win the auction, your ad will appear. If someone clicks on your ad, you pay Google $5 for that click. Now that $5 is a fabricated price. Um, that, this is also a great complement to your SEO. If your SEO is struggling and you're not ranking real high on the search results page, or you want more so social followers, this can help boost you in those areas. Um, so search ads, again, one of the very popular considered the 
modern day yellow pages. Um, if you want businesses, people to find you, consumers to find you, search ads is um, where everybody's at looking for, for services. Display ads. Display ads are online ads, digital display ads uh, that catch your audience when they're not actively looking. So they're reading articles, they're on websites, they're taking in information online. But these are very visual ads that are shown across different sites. Um, they are outside of the normal search campaign. And these ads will appear on the side of a page or inside of an article. Um, you've probably all, if you've read anything online, you've seen these ads already. Um, one of the cool things too that we can do is remarketing. Remarketing is another display tactic. So when somebody clicks on your ad and then they go to your site and then they leave your site, we can then serve them ads again or remarket to them to try to entice them to come back to your site. So it's a wonderful display uh, tool or tactic and it's very trackable. OTT ads or over the top streaming is number six. Um, this is where you're placing video ads on networks like Hulu, Netflix, Peacock, et cetera. Um, there has been a huge growth rate in 2021 as people continue to cut the cord with cable um, and more and more people are watching uh, streaming. We expect this will just continue to, to grow. Okay, into the you decide for 2022 marketing channels, either paid or not paid. You can do it either way. The first one is uh, number seven in our list of 14 local listings and reputation management. This is making sure your information is up to date and accurate on the over 50 directories uh, out there like Yelp, Bing, Yahoo, and Google so that people can find you. Um, so much misinformation is out there. Uh, a lot of these directories take information from one another and so if your information is wrong on one directory, it's going to end up wrong on another directory. If somebody posts something um, about your business, uh, that information can get out there as well and end up on these directories. So it's really important to make sure that the information is correct and that people can find you. And this will include uh, Google Maps, uh, Apple Maps, et cetera, uh, not just uh, search directories um, for information. Uh, it is something that you can do on your own, although I would say that with over 50 directories, it's uh, very time consuming to make sure that your information gets disseminated to all of these sites um, on a regular basis um, and keeping that up to date. So um, I, I feel that paid local listings is a great way to go. Reputation management, the same thing. You can actually respond to, uh, to reviews with local listings, or you can also pay to uh, have a man reputation management company manage reviews for you so that you can get in there and respond to reviews on a timely fashion. Um, but do ask for reviews and respond to them, good or bad. People want to see that your business is present and paying attention to customers. I've had a lot of clients uh, really weary of the negative reviews. And, and uh, my answer to that is, a negative review is an opportunity. It's an opportunity for you to respond in a positive way, guiding or helping the person that, that uh, put the negative review. And sometimes the negative review is for the wrong business. And you certainly want to respond to that to say, you know, say something appropriate uh, in that regard. Um, not only do your customers like to see your positive response to a negative review, but Google also likes to see that and will uh, give you quote unquote points in your organic rankings uh, to see that you're responding positively to these reviews. Email marketing, the tried and true. Um, email marketing is great because it can be very personalized. Um, you can have a person's name actually on the actual um, uh, email. Uh, it's very eye catching. You can use some great creative here. Uh, and this is designed to drive clicks to your website or to a landing page. It's good for both building brand, but also for special offers or to bring in new clients. 
Um, as it says here, over 4 billion daily email users, that's a whole bunch. Um, and 64% of SMBs already use email marketing. Um, it's used an awful lot with my clients. And um, one of the nice things is that you can either use your own database uh, and send emails out at a very low cost or, a not, or no cost. There are plenty of um, sites online that, and tools that can help you with that. Um, or you can uh, use a company like mine where we actually have a totally different set of um, emails that we can send to and scrub against your own internal list. So uh, there's no duplication. So it's a, a great tactic um, is email marketing. Okay, mobile marketing. Mobile marketing is an umbrella term for four ways to approach your marketing to be mobile friendly. The first is optimizing for mobile devices. I touched on this earlier. This is making sure you're working with a smaller screen, that it's easy to navigate, that your call to action buttons are uh, easy to press on and easy to use. As it shows there, 70% of smartphone users have made a purchase after using their phone to discover information. So you definitely wanna make sure that your uh, site uh, is optimizing for mobile devices. The second one is SMS or sending text to do a list of uh, to a list of numbers and providing some exclusive updates. Uh, mobile specific ads or ads that only show on mobile devices. They can be in app ads, for example, call only ads that trigger a call to your business. And then lastly, geofencing. Geofencing uh, shows ads to people who enter or exit a certain area. We call it an invisible fence that we can actually set up around either um, an event uh, or a sporting event, let's say, a venue. And then when people go into that venue or that invisible fence and then they leave, they are served ads, display digital display ads for any length of time, uh, 30 days on average is pretty common. So it's another great way to continue to remind uh, your potential customers that you're there. Moving on to live chat, uh, I would imagine that most of you have uh, been on a site that offers live chat, and this is a great way to have um, an interactive chat box on your website. It helps people to stay on your page a little bit longer, helps to engage them. You can make a special offer, and people seem to really like that. So finally, what is new for 2022? What's trending? What's hot? Podcast marketing is super hot and trendy right now. Um, as it says here, 55% of the US population age 12 and older listen to podcasts. We're gonna be hearing more and more about podcasts. I get notifications every day about podcasts for so many different categories. Um, and this is where you can pay for ad placements on industry specific podcasts, or you could actually create your own. Um, uh, we just expect this to continue to climb and it could go either way for you budget wise. So pay attention to that. The next one is social audio marketing. Um, this was booming in the last year. Clubhouse and Twitter spaces. These are where um, there are new types of social groups where folks can join and there's a designated speaker and listeners. Um, these can actually be as, as large as worldwide. Um, but it would be cool too uh, for your business to hop on a Twitter space, for example, which is also very, you know, uh, popular and talk about your business. And then voice tweets just came out this year too. This could add a little more personality to your social posts. So check those out. Um, and 60% of people agree that audio is more engaging than other forms of content. Between video and audio, those are obviously the two hottest things right now. So pay attention to those. And then AI marketing. Um, this has forecasted a huge growth rate. This is really an internal marketing channel. Um, it will save you time and you can create some really cool stuff here. In this example, uh, the lipstick can be added to the person, to the woman's face, which is pretty cool. Um, you see it in um, decorating, fashion. There's a lot of ways that AI is being used now to, um, to market. And lastly, number 14, last but not least, is the influencer marketing. Um, this is where you're paying people with a certain following on social media to promote your product or service. I think hopefully everybody has heard of this before. Um, I'm not expecting somebody in a small business level to have a, a Kim Kardashian type spokesperson or influencer, um, but this is super hot in 2022 and you can approach it in a much easier way 
by going after a micro influencer because they will have a much larger following of your target audience, perhaps. You can think of niche influencers that could potentially reach out to for a brand promotion, a quick story hashtag, like is in this example, if you can read that. Um, there was just a shout out for this particular business um, with a hashtag. Um, and this is a great thing to try in 2022. So that brings to a close the 14, and I know I went through them really, really fast. Um, hopefully you're still with me here. Uh, final thoughts would be just summarizing the key takeaways from today. Uh, you have lots of options for every budget and size. Remember the buckets, what you need to have, what you wanna have, what works best for you. Remember the SWOT and SMART analysis. Keep the trends in mind while looking at your own marketing is good, looking at your competitors and the changes that are happening are also important. The marketing landscape is always evolving. It's always going to, and so should your strategy. And then lastly, always have a backup plan. Um, when you have variety through a cross-channel approach, uh, you're setting up for success. If a channel goes down, let's say you max out your budget, uh, you lose a referral source, your customer uh, changes their attitude about a certain channel, uh, you have other options available. And uh, we've been really seeing that in particular a lot with the changes in um, print advertising, in the way people view media with television and radio, all have changed so much over the years. Everyone has shifted and uh, come up with new strategies that are working really, really well. And with that, we'll see if we can open up some Q&A. Um, I don't know if, uh, Heather, you want to take a look at the chat or if I can take a look at the chat to see if there are any um, specific questions that came in. If anybody wants to put uh, or if we have time for questions in the chat, Heather, do you want to weigh in on that if there's time? Yes, um, we do have time. We have one question in the chat. Would this PowerPoint be available to be shared with us after the Zoom meeting? Yes, absolutely. I did mention that in the beginning and thanks for bringing it up again for anybody that jumped in a little bit later. Um, uh, this is being recorded um, and we can make it available as well. Any other questions out there? Okay, we have David, you raised your hand. Do you have a question? Yeah. Um, cool. My question was like how these things can be personalized for everybody. Yes. So like can certain people you guys share with contact you to go okay well this personally is my business so what is the best way for us to do those things yeah that's a great question david thank you um everything is meant to be personalized for sure and and with that as i as i went through the swot analysis and the smart uh and the goals um if you take a look at your own business and answer some of those questions about your business, that's how you're going to begin to personalize it and then uh, start to take action with how you want to start building your brand uh, across the different channels that are available to you. It's, it's, it is unique to every business. And, um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I would be more than happy to walk you through um, how you can do that for your business after, after this webinar. Okay, we have another question, um, a couple questions. Any tips on how to find your target consumers when your product is a niche product? Yes, and, and again, if you take a look at the various tools that are available to you, um, niche is a little bit tougher, but if you truly understand who your customer is and who you're targeting, then you can begin to, uh, you know, find the right channels uh, because it might be a little bit tougher if you're not, if you don't have the mass appeal, but it is possible. And again, important message there is whichever channels you choose to make sure that your message is consistent across all of them and to be consistent um, over time and, and, and be patient. That's one of the keys in some of these strategies is to make sure that you have patience to know, to take the time that it's working. 
Um, and again, it, whatever that niche market is, if you want to reach out to me afterwards, I would be happy to work with you. Um, it may be a market that I've already worked in uh, and can help you with that. Awesome. And Tara, thank you. She says SBDC and SCORE may be a resource for individual support. Absolutely. For sure, for sure. Are there any other questions? Uh, again, Teresa, do you have, um, we can put up your information, your contact information. Uh, yes. There we go. Oh, there's uh, this is just the last contact. screen. There's, yep, there's my email and my mobile phone. Feel free to reach out to me. And uh, I'll just say again, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate everybody coming on board. We did cover a lot. I hope you found it to be useful in thinking about your marketing channels and what, what is gonna work for you. Um, we didn't talk about a lot of things like budgeting and how to set that, but with limited time today, wanted to at least open up some thoughts on um, cross-channel marketing and what's out there and available to you. Please feel free to reach out to me at any time and I'm happy to help any of you uh, answer questions or guide you in the process. Awesome. Teresa, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Uh, have a great weekend and watch for more webinars coming up in the future. Thank you. Thank you.